for years I was performing on the cruise ships. Um, I still do. That's most of my money. Um, but I was depressed on the ships because you're not really around doing auditions or doing anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of stuck. Okay, I'm making it. Finally, making a consistent check doing comedy, but I'm gonna go nowhere in life. I'm never gonna. Really, you know, that's how you feel. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how you feel. Mm-hmm. My comedy reel with all my TV stuff was doing really well on YouTube. It was like almost about to hit a million views, and then they cut it off because the person that owned one of my clips from HBO, my 30 second clip that was mixed on it, started his own channel and had YouTube police anyone with clips. So it got cut off. Wow. While the cruise. I was wow. getting, you know, a good thousand views a day. It was adding up. Yeah. And I was getting uh, recognized on the street from that YouTube video, which was like, that was my only thing mm-hmm. that I had <laughs> that made me feel good about myself. And then it got cut off. I had an email from YouTube saying they had to take the video down. Uh, wow. Now I'm like, motherfucker, you know, and then, and then a little soon later, I, I realized, you know, I have these uh, comedian friends that are Dominican, Tommy Pena. Mm. Um, Ivan Benito, they, um, I don't know if you know them. Do you know them? I'm not personally. No, I've, no, I've, I've seen them, but I'm not. No, no. They have a group called that's Dominican. And so I, um, they were doing a lot of skits and I wanted to learn how to do them. Mm. I want to get my social media started, like Instagram, all that. So I, I called him. I was like, yo, I want to start doing skits. He's like, yo, whatever, bro. I got you. Just come down. So we started filming a lot of stuff. And I did a bunch of different characters. Gay character, hillbilly, Italian, <laughs> thug, and the Spanish dude, the Dominican dude. But of course, their following is Dominican. So which character is mm-hmm. going to do well? Is the white guy doing the Spanish. Yeah. I started getting some following, you know, 600 followers. And, you know, we got like 1,000 from one video. I'm like, this is moving. This is cool. And then I went to, uh, I got up to like 17,000. And then I went to DR to test the fame a little bit. And some people mm-hmm. knew me, you know, here and there. So I'm like, uh, fuck, I guess my pages would have come all Dominican. So I came back to New York and I filmed a video in Times Square. I was bored. It was snowing out, just complaining about the snow with my umbrella, you know, like, Odio este país, you know, extraño mi país, República Dominicana. Um, <laughs> Odio is uh, mira, mira, and I'm looking at the snow. I'm like, mira esa mierda cayendo del cielo. You know? <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty awesome. <laughs> you know? And I just posted it random. I just said, I need a video today to post. And I mm-hmm. posted the next day. I was hosting a show in Spanish Harlem. This comedian Imagine. It was for a uh, Violeta's um, dance troupe. And uh, I'm getting all, like, I look at my Instagram and I just see, like, follows, 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 you know? Yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on? And I told text time, I said, your video is viral on WhatsApp right now. Everybody's sharing it. But then no one shared my name. So people had to find my, my page through the comments. Mm-hmm. If they would have shared my name, I got 20,000 followers at more that week, but I would have had hundreds of thousands, you know? Yeah. So, like, that was that was my moment. Like I have 105 now, but it's slow now. It's just not, it's stopped, you know? It's just like, um, that was the moment where I should have been at a half a million. Like mm-hmm. now it's really hard to go viral. Like on Instagram, you got to really TikTok. It's a little more possible. Yeah. So I, anyway, it was still good. And now I'm like, my page is becoming Dominican. So then I started going to DR every three mm-hmm. months, like filming a ton of stuff in the hoods and getting on tons of TV shows and everything. And then I did a video defending the country and the tourists were dying at the resorts, mm-hmm. supposedly from the mini bar. Like eight <laughs> supposedly, <laughs> allegedly, right? Allegedly. allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> hilarious, but, um, I don't know, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't believe that they're really dying from the mini bar. No, but let me ask you this. Wh- what is it about? Cause you go there quite often and I've, yeah. I've seen a lot of videos of you going over there first. What is it about the culture that, that you gravitate towards so much towards and you, cause you really like it and they really have embraced you from what I've seen. Yeah, like, what is it about that culture that like that you like so much? There. At first, it was the women, you know. <laughs> well, obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the women, like we talked about earlier, inspire <laughs> everything. They're, they're <laughs> our inspiration, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, well, for some guys, the men, you know, it depends. Yeah, yeah. whatever we're attracted to, whatever is our inspiration sexually that's, yeah. to to work. So, right, that's yeah. your motivation. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um. So, I um, I visit my cousin lives out there. My cousin lives in BJ Med since 2000. Oh, wow. Since 2005. Oh. He's a doctor in the States. 
he works in the States part-time and then lives there. So he pretty much works three, four months a year and lives there at least eight, nine without working at all. He's a bachetero. He plays bachata. Oh, wow. wow. Really? That's awesome. Half Jewish, half Puerto Rican. His dad's the one that invented hydro surge, the dog washing machine. That, the dog, wow. Yeah, nice. It helped my dog's mange, which is the reason why my dad went from, he became a dog groomer, went from diamond setting to dog grooming. Back to dog grooming. <laughs> yeah, it helped. Circle here. He started That's... grooming dogs in the neighborhood. It worked, and then he just went to school for grooming and then became a groomer. Oh wow! So, so I visit my cousin. He's like, "Yo, you like Latinas? Come out to Dominican Republic. Every girl's Latina here." <laughs> so I'm like, "Oh, this sounds like a good idea." So I went to visit him, but I didn't know any Spanish. I knew "Hola" and "Adios." Yeah, so I had enough Spanish to to start and end the conversation with a woman. You know. Mm-hmm. For like an hour, I'd be like, hola, in like a million different ways. Like, hola, hola, <laughs> hola, hola, you know? And finally, she'll be like, adios. adios. <laughs> I don't even get to use my second word. She used it for me. Um, <laughs> but the whole time, we met, I met this hot girl in Boca Chica, and I, I couldn't speak any. I was just staring at her the whole time my mm-hmm. cousin, with my cousin. So we had to translate for me. Then he had to call her for me and then he got her number. Well, he got a number for me. Then he called her for me and he probably slept with her for me too. Cause he's a good <laughs> my cousin's good people, you know, so he probably did good that. he's good people, right? <laughs> keeps it in the family. He keeps it in the family. Yeah. He keeps it in the family, which is nice. Yeah. So I came back and started, I started I signed up for a Spanish school that my mom always wanted me to go to, but I didn't want to, I didn't care about Spanish as a kid because all the Latinas in my neighborhood spoke English. Mm-hmm. So I wanted back to speak Spanish for what? Yeah. Right. Up with English. Yeah. You know, like and it wasn't until I was older, I realized most of the Latinos around the world, the beautiful ones don't speak English. Correct. You no, know, but my teacher should have knew that when I was a kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he should have sat me down and been like, Jason, listen, you want to come up to listen. be a thick pervert that grows, you know, that flies four hours to a foreign Latin country just so you could get women and you, and you can't get any because you don't know how to say you know the, the language. <laughs> huh? You know, Cuanto es? Oh, now, do your homework. Right. That would have been motivation. <laughs> yeah. So <sighs> I um. I started going, I started, I went to school for a year and a half, a year and three months. And then I just started dating girls online and meeting them and speaking Spanish and kept going back and forth for 10 years. I was just going to DR two, three times a year just to hang out and have fun. So it happened organically, like all the mm-hmm. Dominican stuff. Like it just came out of my love for the country that, that Tigre Bacano became big. It was never my goal to be famous there. I just like going there to enjoy it. You know? mm-hmm. Never for a second was it my goal to be famous there. How did you come up with that name? Tommy named me Tigre de Bacano. Oh. My friend Tommy. He said, you know, it's getting popular. You need a name for that character. Yeah, it's man. Tigre de Bacano. <laughs> okay. People have used that before. Mm-hmm. It's not like super unique. The um, Tigre is a real common. Just call oh, him yeah. Tigre. Tigre, yeah. Tigre. Mm-hmm. Tigre de Bacano, though, you know, it's not that common. And mm-hmm. I'm the only one that really made the name famous by making do using it constantly with comedy and everything so yeah. i got it trademarked you know really I oh, get cool. trademarked in dominican republic yeah um so it became you know it became something through that and i don't really make money i'm an idiot with social media my <laughs> youtube and facebook page are nothing but my instagram and tiktok are, fun, are good mm-hmm. but you know i've also been on so many other people's pages and stuff I did Dominicans Got Talent. When I defended the country, the tourists, I did a video that went viral defending, saying more violence happened in New York than DR. Yeah. And it's bullshit, um, all this, you know. Mm-hmm. So that went viral as hell. Now, one of the things, like two things that you that I know that you do is that you go to some of the poorest neighborhoods in the country. Yeah. And, and, and you see that level of poverty that a lot of people in the States cannot really relate to. And, and there's things that you're doing over there. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, I um, please. I know this is something personal that you really well, look, don't. I knew I knew the videos in the hood were, were, were better because it's such a contrast between me and that. Mm-hmm. But I also enjoy being there more. I find um, just I'd like being around the nor- just p- normal people more people mm-hmm. that, like I don't know. I just I just I just like it. I don't want to live there. I don't want to live in a shack, mm-hmm. a chosa, whatever, you know, I don't want to live mm-hmm. in one. Yeah, Chosa, I, just, yeah. I find people more real there and I, you get um, the videos are way more interesting. Yeah. So I, you know, I started doing charities there too. You know, we built this lady, a house, this old lady that lived next to my ex first girlfriend there. Mm-hmm. She lived in a sh- like a shack, you know, 
with it was seen like the metal roof and yep mm -hmm. yeah um garbage everywhere you know bathroom outside everyone shares privy mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. so i call this this charity joan pay and they're a real big charity out there maybe the biggest one i i just wrote him i said i want to help with something you know and she said okay like mm -hmm. we got these charity we got this this you could do this that you know for six grand we could build someone a one-bedroom house i said that i want to do let's yeah. build a house yeah and she said, well, then we got to find someone now. I said, I got the person. I said, oh, Leah, help me with some comedy videos before. She lives right next to my ex. Mm -hmm. Let's build her the house, you know? Mm -hmm. So she said, okay. And we got the money together. We did the videos, built the money up. We got the money together. It was ready. So I went and surprised her and told her, you know, we're going to build you a house. It's wow. like ridiculous. And she ended up, and we built her the house. Um, I find her daughter. I didn't like her daughter that much. I, I felt like she was... They ended up her husband and her daughter's husband ended up helping like build the house, but he got paid to do it. Mm -hmm. and they stole like paint to build mm -hmm. paint their own house and stuff. Mm -hmm. It was a schemey. It's like we're building your mom a house that that because she needs a house because you live in a normal house right next to her shack, which is yeah. ridiculous. But mm -hmm. now the daughter's the owner of the house, which annoys me because mm -hmm. the mom died. She she died eight months after we built her the house. Oh wow. Oh wow. But she lived 88 years, almost 89, you know, like with nothing. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, some random strangers building a house. She saw a moment of something, you know, she experienced an amazing moment. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And that's, that's, a, that's something to be possible to build everyone a place. Like, you can get that money. Six yeah. Six in a house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's you know, not bad at all. And it's four people. Let's say four people, were, you know. Yeah. It's a lot of money, but it's there. This, this, you know, but you can, it's doable. Yeah. It's cool for like, I was fantasized about winning like, Three hundred million dollars or something. <laughs> Just build houses all over. Shoot it like yeah, build yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome. But, um, I wouldn't use it all though. I, if I'm winning three hundred mil, Dr's not getting all of that. No. <laughs> no, 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 of course not. <laughs> They're gonna get a lot of it. There yeah. you go. You know what I mean? They're gonna. Yeah, get of course. You can't just. You just have to spend almost. You almost got to spend the interest you make on that to help every year. Yeah. yeah. Say, oh, let me take hundred million, throw that away. It's almost. I don't. You know, I don't know how money works well because I'm bad with it. Yeah. <laughs> I know that. You know, but I yeah. would love that's always a fantasy of mine. Yeah. To like, you know, make sure everyone has a place. Yeah. Yeah. It's so not a, bad, not a bad thing. Yeah. I'm gonna try to start a foundation. Someone, um, my friend Sandra Castillo is, is supposed to help me start my foundation in DR. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to do a video that I, I spent six hours filming yesterday, very frustrating day. Mm. That I don't like anything I filmed, so I gotta do that because I gotta put it. <laughs> Big, um, they do having a huge thing with all the foundations this week. Mm -hmm. Wants to put my me saying some words on the screen. Oh, so awesome! It's for kids, mm -hmm. all stuff for kids. I did stuff for kids too. We gave out toys to kids, you know, uh, sick kids in the hospital during Christmas. And I, I helped another guy fix his house, this old blind guy. Mm -hmm. Fix his, it was stuffed with garbage and rats and everything. Wow. New bed, fan, cleaned his whole house, painted it, got nice. him a new roof. For like fourteen hundred bucks that I did on GoFundMe. Oh wow! He ended up dying too. Wow! I guess if you want someone killed, have me do a charity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you know who to stay away from right now. <laughs> Just yeah. kidding. No, but I think I, I want to involve myself more with kids because the oldest saying, you know, kids are our future, and, mm. and kids, you know, live longer. Yeah. Um, I just mean I just want I just but I love kids like I don't have my own kids but I just I just when I went to visit these kids at the hospital like it just kids are the best so I just want to yeah. help kids yeah um, what am I doing charity for animals too I love animals right they're more innocent than kids almost yeah yeah, yeah definitely but kids are the choice and that's that's what I'm gonna be working on yeah so from a lot there's a lot of people that grew up in new york uh grew up in the states um and they they have they have accessibility and options when it comes to to things that other countries don't have and but culturally we 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 we're right now at a stage of really critical critical situations i think in the states in which we are too separate is there something that people can learn from a tiny island like dominican republic in terms of of unity of, of, of not having much, but being happy and being real. Is there anything that the, that us here living in the States uh, concern so much about separation that could learn from a little Island like that? We're, we're too stubborn. I don't think we'll learn anything, but um, 
it's just, um, I guess, to treat life more like a party. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Get your work done, you know, but 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 have fun. We live once, you know. Yeah. Enjoy your day more. Yeah. Um, I find in, in New York, I find the poor people. People, I mean, the the people in DR in the in the Badios are um, happier on average than people with money in the States. Mm -hmm. And I think because there's a lot less jealousy because for example, you go to my neighborhood, I live in Hudson, near Hudson, in Hudson Yards. You could go to 25th, there's like billionaire buildings on one side of the street and the projects on the other. Mm -hmm. You just look out your window and see what you don't have. Yeah. yeah. In the hood, everyone's equal, mm -hmm. you know? And those, mm -hmm. everyone got the same horrible shack and people are just equal you're just seeing like you know maybe you get jealous if you if you go out of the hood but a lot of them don't leave the hood yeah see it's consistent so yeah they might have moments of jealousy where they see something they got to go somewhere but mm -hmm. it's pretty consistent no one has shit mm -hmm. yeah. all of us don't have shit let's just try to do the best we can with that but here yeah. you see how much better life can get mm -hmm. in a lot of places in the world yeah that's why I think a lot of people just now, then you got the hood, like in New York city, which is consistently kind of poor in the hood, mm. but you still, people still have access to TV and the internet and, and so many things. I mean, a lot of people in these barriers don't have phones and don't have much access. Mm. They're not really okay. watching much. Yeah. yeah. There's no standing.